guys, my name is Frankie and welcome to Geekdom. Yay! Um, so, it's my I mean, I guess technically the other one was a video, but it's my first official video. Woo! Today I'm going to be doing the coffee book tag. And I thought, you know, I can combine coffee and books, which are two things I love. Woot woot. <laughs> so, yay! I'm not really sure who created this tag, but I will leave a link to their video in the in the description below. And I saw this video on Caddy Tastic's channel, so I will leave a link to that video below. It was a while ago. <laughs> Number one, Black Coffee. Name a book series that is hard to get into but has some hardcore fans. For this one, I'm going with The Walking Dead or Game of Thrones. Um, for The Walking Dead, it's more of the TV show. Um, I tried to watch the first two or three episodes like five times and I just never got into it and I, 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 I'm gonna be honest here I've lied about watching The Walking Dead before because I was just like I'm sorry but I know all the characters and I know who dies like you know it's just I can't I can't watch it I've tried I really have and I it didn't work for me but for Game of Thrones which I love um I love the book series and I love the TV series both of which are slightly inappropriate for my age group. <laughs> that aside, um, yeah, Game of Thrones has uh, so many fans, and I love them all. And the problem with the Game of Thrones books, um, usually the TV show is really easy. It's like just swoops you in the world. Um, but for the t for the for the book series, um, it's just very complicated and very convoluted at times and it can just become very hard to keep track of everything in your head. Um, my friend actually did this once. She took the book um, and cut out all each all of the chapters. Um, and each chapter has a different perspective and she put the perspectives together. So for example the Danny chapters she put all of those together and the Arya chapters she put all of those together and the Tyrion chapters she put all of those together and then read the book like that. Um, which she said that was a lot easier. I, I just read the book normally, but, you know, I, I, should, I probably should try that because I don't really remember what happened in the first book. I vaguely remember, mainly because of the TV show, but still. Number two, Peppermint Mocha. Name a book or a series that gets more popular in the winter time. For this one, I am choosing A Little Something Different by Sandy Hall. Um, this book is definitely kind of, it's, it's, a, it's like a Valentine's Day kind of novel. A lot of people, most people pick like um, My True Love Gave to Me and Other Twelve and Twelve Other Stories or Let It Snow. That's the name of the book, right? Like True Love Gave to Me, something like that. That that's that uh, anthology edited by um, Stephanie Perkins. But I love this book. If you don't know this book, it takes place from nineteen fourteen, fourteen different perspectives, and one of them is a park bench, and the other one is a squirrel. It's great. And the two main characters who are falling in love, you never see the perspective. And it's just, it's, it's so sweet. And I love it. And I always read it in February on Valentine's Day. So, you know, winter time. Number three, Hot Chocolate, your favorite children's book. For this one, I'm going with Where the Mountain Meets the Moon by Grace Lynn. Um, this book, I, it's not, it's not exactly a children's book. It's like a middle, it's like an early chapter book. It's pretty easy to read. Um, the text is pretty big, but... I read this book in like fourth grade and I loved it. It was so good. It, the 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 plot was great and it was it's kind of based off of Chinese folklore, um, but it's written by this lady who she is Chinese and she kind of took uh from what I know, she basically took her the stories she was told as a child and kind of turned them into like a little novel. And it was so cute and it was about this girl named about this girl named Minli. So Minli sets on a quest to find the old man of the moon. He will know how to, she can bring good fortune to her family. Yeah. But it's a great book. Um, new very honor uh, book. You know. It's pretty great. Number four. The Double Shot of Espresso. A book that keeps you on the edge of your seat. I have two for this one. Um, the first one is obviously a fantasy novel. Throne of Glass by Sarah J. Mass. Love this book. So good highly recommend um also go into reading go into this book like not knowing what it's about makes it a hundred times better it's 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 such a good series it's gonna be a six book series or a five book set right now Sarah J Mass is queen I love her 
read it. And the other one is a realistic fiction book, and that is All the Bright Places by Jennifer Niven. Um, I know this is not your traditional pick for this topic, but um, I was really, really attached to the characters in this book, and I desperately needed to know what was going on, and so I was on the edge of my seat. I finished this book in one sitting, to put it simply. I love this book. Read it. I have yet to read her new book, and I've heard mixed reviews, and I'm scared because I don't want to dislike it because I love this one so much. <laughs> But you know, I think I think I like it. Maybe and it, the concept seems wonky, but basically, this is about a girl named Violet and Finch. And Violet and Finch, they both have issues with depression, and basically, they meet at the top of a clock tower, where they're about to jump off. And romance ensues. Number five, Starbucks. Name a book that you see everywhere. So for this one, I'm going to just say every gone, gone, every John Green book, especially The Fault in Our Stars and Paper Towns, which are the two that have been adapted into movies, and I think Looking for Alaska is being adapted into a movie. But uh, to be honest, I really enjoyed The Fault in Our Stars, and I liked Paper Towns. And I read Abundance of Catherine's. I actually really loved Will, Will Grace and Will Grace and that was my favorite. Um, but the the problem with his books is that it's always the same friggin' plot and I'm like, dude, come up with something else. Like it's like quirky boy meets special girl. Yay. I mean John Green is don't get me wrong, John Green is an excellent writer and I love his YouTube channel. Like vlog, vlog brothers, check them out. I'll leave a link in the description. But it's great, great. You know, I keep saying I'm, leaving, I'm gonna leave a link in the description. I'm like, chances are, if you come to my at the moment non-existent YouTube channel, um, the likelihood that you're gonna know who John Green is versus me, you're gonna know who John Green is, and you're probably not gonna listen to some whack job on the internet who's making. It's no sense about books. I'm literally wearing a shirt that says I'm not crazy, I'm a fangirl. Um, but seriously, I am, um, yeah. I don't know. Number six, that hipster coffee shop. Give a book, give a shout out to an indie author. For this one, I'm doing I Am a Freak by Elizabeth Atkinson. Um, this is probably one of my all time favorite books. It's a really short read. Um, it's only like, 200 something 220 pages it's so friggin good it's about this girl who has a lot of trouble with her self-esteem and you know she is really smart she's tall she's beautiful but she doesn't see that and she is constantly made fun of by her peers and it's just it, life kind of sucks for her and to top it off her name's Emma Freak and that sounds like I am a freak, um, which is why that's the name of the book. And it's kind of all about her coming to terms with who she is. And I think I read this at the perfect time in my life because this book really helped me. It just it helped me become who I am sort of today. I mean, I don't know, it's just, it's that one book that I read when I was a kid. Or, well, I didn't read it when I was a kid. I read it when I was like in sixth grade, but... I read this when I was in sixth grade and two years later I saw this book on the shelf and I was like, need it. I saw it at Barnes & Noble and I'm like, need it, need it. I bought it and I bought it and I haven't, I haven't reread it but I just wanted it because this is a book I want to give to any person out there who is struggling with self-esteem because I love this book and this book is just, it, it's amazing. Number seven. Oops, I accidentally got decaf, a book that you're expecting more from. Um, for this one, I am choosing the Iron Trial series. Um, I don't think the third one's out yet, but I have the first two books in the series. Um, okay, so this this series is written by Cassandra Clare and Holly Black, and Cassandra Clare and Holly Black are like two of the most well-known authors out there, you know? Um, especially like because of Shadowhunters and Black Cat and which is by Holly Black. I mean I don't know, it's just I was expecting something amazing and what I got was a ripoff of Harry Potter. 
And no offense, but Harry Potter cannot be ripped off. Unless you're Rainbow Rowell and you're amazing. And it it it, it is meant to be fan fiction. This this was not supposed to be fan fiction. This was supposed to be a legitimate series and it wasn't. I mean I haven't even read this book yet. I've only read the first one and I, I probably I don't even know if I'm gonna read this one. But like I don't like here's my thing. It's just like I don't want to invest my money in a book series that's shit and that it's not this book this book was really good it was well written it's just the idea was so lackluster and I'm like what you couldn't have come up with something more original the people who created the shadow wonders and everything that Holly Black created I haven't read any Holly Black books I'm sorry I've read I've read, I've read the coldest girl in cold town the coldest girl in cold town it's a stupid name. The coldest girl in Cold Town. Say that five times fast. The coldest girl in Cold Town. The coldest girl in Cold Town. The coldest girl in Cold. See, you can't say it five times fast. I dare you say it five times fast. Um, but <laughs> I don't know. This is expecting more, and I love Cassandra Clare. She's my she's my favorite, you know. But mm, stick with Shadowhunters or write something else that's not Harry Potter. I'm using my phone as my light. Hang on. Do do. It is currently 5.40. Can you focus, please? Thank you. It is currently, seriously, 5.41. Focus. There we go. Yeah, so. I'm usually not an early riser unless I do an all-nighter, which I just did. Which is basically me. I, I'm nocturnal. Number eight, The Perfect Blend, a book that is sweet and sour, but ultimately satisfying. And aside from Harry Potter, I'm going to go with Akatar, which is A Court of Mist a court of Thorns and Roses, and it is probably one of my all-time favorite books. Um, but, and, I, and I love, don't get me wrong, I love Throne of Glass, which is Sarah J. Mass's other series, but <sighs> Akatar, a special place in my heart, especially Akamoff, which is A Court of Mist and Fury, which which gave me all the feels. I've read it three times this year. And it came out of March. May? March. It came out of March. It's signed. My book is signed. It's so cool because I got a book con. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's it's so good. Read it. It's like a it's like a Beauty and the Beast retelling. But it's like with fairies. And it's great. <laughs> oh, let me just tell you, is is, is Tom Notch. Number nine, Green Tea. I don't really know why it's on here because this is a coffee book tag, but whatever. Green Tea, a book that is quietly beautiful. For this one, I'm choosing The Night Circus by Aaron Morgenstern, and that is because The Night Circus is a very slow paced book. However, if you, when you, once you, it's just, the writing is so beautiful and the story is just so beautiful. Everything about it is just mysterious and dark and just gorgeous. It, the entire book is just gorgeous. And as a, oh, as an aspiring writer, sentences in that book were like, my future loves because I wanted to marry those sentences because like, actually, you have no idea. Number 10, Chai Tea, a book that made you dream of far off places. Now for this one, honorable mentions are Harry Potter and Truth Witch. Um, Harry Potter is by J.K. Rowling, obviously, and Truth Witch is by Sarah Dennard. The second book is coming out in like a two weeks, and I'm so happy. Wow. Um, but ultimately, we gotta pull, pull out this book. Ow. Ultimately, Saga wins out. If you don't know what Saga is, it is this fabulous, fabulous graphic novel by Brian K. Brian K. Vagnoff? Vagnoff? I'm sorry. And the drawings are by Fiona Staples, and I love this series. It's just like. I don't know how to describe it. It's like basically just like all of the. It's like this intergalactic war with all of these different species and races fighting each other and it's like this there's such a complex story and there's the themes of family and love and betrayal and trust and 
Plus, there's a, well, I mean, okay, um, future recommendation. If you are under the age of 15, I'm 14. If you're under the age of 14, do not read this book. It is kind of adult. I mean, the cover is literally a baby sucking on someone's boob. So, that's an indication. Um, yeah. This is number 11, which is Earl Grey, Name Your Favorite Classic. For this one, I'm going to go with Alice in Wonderland because it's my favorite book ever and I love Alice in Wonderland. Alice in Wonderland just makes me so happy because Alice in Wonderland, because Alice in Wonderland. I want to be the Cheshire Cat. But yeah, um, that or Peter Pan, which I've also read, and Peter Pan is great. I got into Peter Pan and Alice in Wonderland, both through the Disney movies, which are fantabulous, by the way. But um, if you're gonna stick with, okay, if you're gonna if you're gonna take an Alice in Wonderland movie, the Disney one is the most like the books, but I like the first one with Johnny Depp in it, the Tim Burton one. Um, but for Peter Pan, stick with the Disney one because all of those Pan hook ones are just mm -mm, no. And my added on question is half and half, which is like that creamer you put into the tea, or, or tea or coffee. Um, but a ship that you have where you only like one character. Um, so for example, mine is Delena. I love Damon. I hate Elena because Elena is so friggin' irritating. Um, Delena is from the Vampire Diaries. I haven't read the books, but I've only I've watched I've watched the TV series. I love the Vampire Diaries. It's so good. It's so good. Um, but I absolutely love Damon, and I want him to be happy. And I know that Elena makes him Elena makes him happy, which is the only reason why I ship it. Because also Stefan annoys me, and I like Stefan. I, I, I like Caroline. Steriline is what. That sounds like sterilization, that's awful. But, um, yeah, so. I love Damon. Do not like Elena. Elena's annoying. Um, but yeah. Same thing with Bonnie and Jeremy. They only like one person in, like, all of the couples. No. Um, but yeah. Um, Delena. Delena for life. Anyways, thank you so much for watching. I will see you next time. Stay geeky. Geeky. That's a cool outro. I could do that. Yeah. Stay geeky. Geeky. I can't say the word geeky. Stay not- stay antisocial. Bye!